So I think this is going to be a pretty good video. We talk about these all the time. As gun owners, we do them on a routine basis. Well, and if you're a gun owner and you haven't done these, you're probably doing something wrong. But when we do these, what do they really tell us? And more importantly, what don't they tell us? What am I talking about? Function checks. Welcome back guys, gals, and all of you out there across the world. I'm the Gun Psychiatrist and welcome back to another episode where we're going to be talking guns, gunsmithing, and more importantly function checks and what they do and don't tell us. The candidate rifle that we will be using for this video is a Stevens Springfield Model 187 November. Now for most of you that don't know, the 187 November is a blowback operated 22 long rifle they're great little squirrel guns, and this one seems to be having some issues. Function checks can only tell us so much about a fire. Why do we do function checks? Number one, a function check tests the safety mechanism in the fire control group. That's it. They don't really tell us much about function other than that the fire control group is functioning. For example, if we rack this bolt back and put it forward, obviously we know this is unloaded because we've checked the chamber, the magazine's unloaded. Okay, and we squeeze the trigger, the hammer goes off. Okay, it hits the firing pin, the firing pin flies forward, thus striking the round that is sitting in the chamber. And if this were live, the subsequent gas would blow back the action, recock the hammer, and go forward. Once this happens, the hammer is thus reset by the bolt. And when we let go of the trigger, we should hear what is called a disconnector, disconnect the hammer from the sear, allowing it to reset back onto the main sear of the trigger. Hear that little click? There we go, okay? And thus, if we squeeze the trigger again, we would repeat the process. But in this case, we did not hear a click. It's striker fired, moron. So, doing a function check on this firearm tells us a lot about what could be going on with it. We obviously have an issue in the trigger pack, but when we fire it, it tells us a completely different story of what's going on with it, because there's something happening with the bolt and the trigger pack simultaneously. And it's hard to narrow down. So as gunsmiths, you need to be very keenly aware of what is going on and how to diagnose each system. Function checks can tell you a lot about a gun, but there's also a lot they can't tell you. Specifically, they're not gonna tell you how the gun actually functions. They're just gonna tell you that the function of the fire control group is working properly, which in this case, it doesn't seem to be working very properly. <laughs> so how else do you check the function of a firearm? But a test fire in this case would tell us what's going on with this gun and we can thus narrow down the problem. Why do I say this? Well, there's something called a cycle of operations that occurs in a firearm. In this specific gun, down in the bottom of this magazine tube, there's something called a cartridge stop. The cartridge stop applies pressure to the round and prevents it from being ejected from the magazine tube, not ejected from the chamber. Upon the bolt coming back, that cartridge stop spring is actuated and is pushed out of the way, thus allowing a cartridge to be thrown into the magazine well. And upon the bolt starting to flow forward, a lifter would lift the round up and allow the bolt to chamber the round, thus allowing you to fire the firearm. When the hammer falls, the round goes off. Gases blow the bolt all the way back, allowing the hammer to be reset, ejects the cartridge, another one is coming out simultaneously in the magwell, and then of course as the bolt goes forward, the lifters lift it up and chamber a new round. And the process continues to repeat itself until you run out of ammunition. 
In this candidate gun, though, we have to look at what is going on because there's something happening here that I want to show you on camera. Yes, I'm finally here in my new shop without walls, and we can finally do some live fires on camera. Let's check it out. So in this instance, I've loaded three cartridges into this firearm. So we're going to do some simple test firing and find out what in the world is going on with this thing. Fire in the hole. So as you see, there's no sear reset. But is there another round in the chamber? There is. So what this tells me, the blowback operation of this firearm is enough to have a new cartridge come into the chamber. It ejects the old cartridge. It comes out of the magazine well. The follower throws it up. The bolt catches it and pushes it back in the chamber. But again, I happen to, just from feeling this thing from the function check and from firing it, which we would have never noticed on the function check, is that the bolt is not coming back far enough to reset the hammer, disconnect it from the sear, and allow it to reset back onto the trigger, thus allowing the user to fire another round. Pulling it out fully. This time, it reset the hammer enough for us to fire. But we seem to be out of ammunition. So, this could be a possibility of ammunition. We have two different grades. We have this just, you know, straight lead tip, and then we have another variety. So in diagnosis of this, to test the possible theory that, well, hey, we could have an uh, ammunition problem, we're going to start with, we know the rounds that cycle. These might be a little bit higher of a grade of round. We're going to put that one in first, then we're going to drop another one in, and a third one. And we're going to see what the hell happens here. Fire in a hole. Okay, so we're getting some intermittent spikes. What this tells me now is that it could pipe quite possibly just need to be cleaned. Now, the, the owner of this rifle said that, of course, he cleaned it, obviously, before, you know, it finding its fate with me to figure out what's going on. But it could just need some lubrication, and it looks really dry in there. So I'm going to verify this again with some more ammo, and we're going to see what happens. We've loaded three more of the, what we'll call the underpowered ammunition. That to me stinks. So that tells me enough. Gunsmiths, gun owners, everybody out there. 90% of the time when you're having issues with a firearm, it's usually due to it not being properly cleaned. And I happen to have a feeling that this is exactly what this is. So what we'll do is we'll go back up to the house. We're going to fully strip this thing, clean it, and put it all back together and see if we can still replicate this issue, which will tell us thus that something is wrong. For those of you aspiring gunsmiths out there, this is just all a day on the job. This is what it takes you got to narrow down the problem. And nine times out of ten, it's lubrication and cleanliness. So let's go really verify and see if my theory proves to be true. If not, we might find something wrong on the inside of the gun once we inspect all the parts.